Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day at 8 a.m. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Amcor technology stock by analyzing their financial ratios and dissecting their financial statements so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Amcor is a semiconductor product packaging and test services provider. The company was founded in 1969. It has factories in China, Japan, Korea, Malaysia, Philippines, Portugal, and Taiwan. It packages and tests integrated circuits for chip manufacturers. In 2017, Amcor was recognized as Supplier of the Year by Qualcomm for the second consecutive year. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 3.6 billion market cap. They're trading at 1477, and they have 242 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows, and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And the company has positive free cash flow each year, and it's the highest in the trailing 12 months, 295 million. Net income is all over the place. It's 261 in 2017, then drops a lot to 127, then jumps back up to 311 in the trailing 12 months. Revenue looks pretty good. It grows from 4.2 billion to 4.9 billion. It does slip a little in 2019, but comes right back up in the trailing 12 months. This is the company's income statement. The top line is their revenue. Their revenue is highest in the trailing 12 months, 4.9 billion. The company has really high cost of revenue as a percent of revenue, 4 billion in trailing 12 months. So their gross profit was 845 million. Operating expenses aren't too high, so they do have operating income each year. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. And then there's other income or expenses. In 2017, they had 93 million of other income. That was from the gain on the sale of a security. The reason it's reported in other income is because it's not part of their core business. Their core business isn't to sell securities. Their core business is to make semiconductors. But this gain will be reversed out on the statement of cash flows. The reason their net income was so high in 2017 relative to 2018 and 19 was because of this $93 million of other income. They had the highest net income in the trailing 12 months. That's mainly due to their high revenue. And this is a statement of cash flows. And the top line is the operating cash flow. That's how much money the company makes on its operational business. So it makes between 500 and 700 million dollars a year from its business. That's a good sign. You want to see a company that's generating positive operating cash flow. Their capital expenditures are fairly high just because of the nature of their business. So their free cash flow is positive each year. So they don't need debt or equity financing to run their business. Although they may take out debt when they want to take on new projects like acquire another business or buy a factory, something like that. They did issue a little capital stock, 3 million in 2017, 1 million in 2018, and 11 million in 2019. And it seems like their debt issuance is mostly rolling their debt. They issued $376 million and they paid $500 million. And in the following three years, the amount of debt they issued was similar to the amount of the debt they repaid. Because a lot of companies don't pay down the debt when it's due. They just issue new debt to pay the old debt. Let's look at a capital structure. They have $1.6 billion of debt and $696 million of net debt. Net debt is total debt minus cash on the balance sheet. A positive $700 million of net debt means that if they used all the cash on their balance sheet to pay down their debt, they would still have $700 million of debt left over. And they have $2 billion of equity, and the interest they pay in their debt is 4.16%. Cost of debt is 3.75%. And to calculate cost of debt, it's interest rate times 1 minus the effective tax rate. And 44% of the capital structure is debt, which means 56% is equity. Cost of equity is 14.68%. And we used a beta to figure that out. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And the beta is 1.61, so the stock moves about one and a half times the market. And the WAC is 9.8%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 1.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $1.7 billion. We divide that by 242 million shares. 
and we get a calculated stock price of 681. They're trading at 1477, so they're trading at a 117% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street is a little higher than me. They're at 904, so they're also saying the stock is overvalued. This is the stock price the last five years, and it has grown since 2015, but it's kind of been up and down, so it depends where you bought it. And it appears that it's trading at its all-time high. This company has never paid a dividend and doesn't plan on paying dividends in the future. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have $21,000 today. That's a 110% return or an annual average return of 7.7%. This is a little blurb from an analyst report. It mentions the company has been growing very fast after posting four consecutive quarters with record revenues. It also mentions that it thinks the company may start to be able to pay a dividend. The analyst thinks fourth quarter will be a bad quarter for this company. That's the quarter we're currently in. They only have 275 customers, and some of their customers are large semiconductor companies, probably like Intel or Nvidia. And their 10 largest customers account for 63% of their total sales. Let's look at our financial ratios. The average PE is 13, the median is 14.3, PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 11.5, so they have a really good PE ratio. Average price of sales is 5.9, the median is 2.2. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. They're at 0.7, so they have an awesome price to sales ratio. The average price to book is 4.5, the median is 2.3. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. They're at 1.8, so they're doing really well in this category also. Equity is assets minus liabilities in the balance sheet. And their tangible equity is 1.9 billion. So most of the assets on their balance sheet are tangible assets, not intangibles. Average interest coverage ratio is 12.8. The median is 3.8. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They're at 6.2, so they can easily cover their interest payments. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. Average ROE is 10%, the median is 11%. ROE is net income over equity. They're at 16%, so they're doing much better than the median average. Average current ratio is 1.9, the median is 1.3. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They're at 1.9, so they can cover their current liabilities with their current assets. Their current assets are $894 million of cash, $850 million of receivables, and $220 million of inventory. In the trailing 12 months, they had $295 million of free cash flow, and their working capital is $942 million. Working capital is current assets minus current liabilities, so the company is well capitalized, they're in good shape. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on advanced micro devices, Intel, Marvel, Micron, NVIDIA, NXP, Skyworks, Taiwan Semiconductor, and Texas Instruments, all in the same industry as Amcor. And if Amcor has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. Their PE is worse than the average. Their price of sales and price to book are better than the average. They have a good current ratio. ROE is a little lower than average. Their debt is a lot higher than average. And they're a really small company. They're the smallest in this industry. And they don't pay a dividend. Most companies do pay a dividend in this industry. So to summarize, even though their ratios and financials look okay, I still have them trading at a premium because their stock price is so high. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.